All right, good afternoon and welcome to John Box Watercolor. Today we're gonna to be painting a scene from Madrid, Spain, but before we get started, if you wouldn't mind giving this video a thumbs up and if you really like what you see, consider subscribing. I'm gonna have three to four new videos coming out each week, so stay tuned. All right, let's go ahead and get rolling here. I'm gonna put our reference photo over on the right-hand side of the screen. Now, I've done a little bit with this. I've scooted our tower over towards the left. I kind of wanted to ignore the third building that's all the way on the left in the reference photo here. And so I just kind of pushed, pushed this building over. Um, I added some cars here. And what I'm hoping to do is this is going to be backlit with a little bit of right to left light. And I want to have these cars kind of bleed down into the shadow that's going to be cast from this building. But we'll see how it goes. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, I'm going to go ahead and spray my palette here and spray a little bit of water on the paper as well. I'm going to grab one of my larger brushes. This is just a regular flat brush. It's uh, not even a watercolor brush, but I like to use this whenever I'm spreading water on the paper. And so I'm just going to take some dirty water here and spread it along our sky just so that when I come in with that paint, it can maintain a bit more light. All right. Let's keep our sky on the cooler side. I'm going to grab a little bit of cobalt blue here. Okay, add a little bit of water, just a bit more blue. All right, let's see here. Yeah, I think that looks pretty good. Let's use what we've got here. Add a bit more pigment down here towards the bottom. Okay. All right, and both this building and this building here are going to be painted over in our second wash. So really, I'm just going to try to put some color on them. I'm not too worried about temperature or anything like that. So I'm just trying to mix up a gray that's somewhat neutral. And we'll just keep working along here. The only thing I'm going to have to be careful of is that awning over there. I want to, I want to cut that out. You know what, I'm going to grab some red just to warm it up in there, have a bit of fun. And again, all that's going to be painted over. Okay, let's come through here. And actually, you know what? I'm going to use that same red for the awning. I've got a, a Mayan orange here, and I believe that's a scarlet red. It's a scarlet or a cadmium. All right, that looks good. Excellent. Now, anything I want to be careful of, I'm just looking down here and I'm trying to decide if there's anything I want to leave out and, and leave some of that white paper behind. I, I don't think there is. I think I'm okay here. So I'm going to just mix up something a little bit neutral, a little warm there. I'm just going to take some water and just pull this through here. Keep it nice and light and let's work on our foreground. I want to keep the foreground nice and cool just to kind of help reflect our sky a little bit. And a lot of it is going to be covered up anyways. Warm that up just a touch. And this is yellow ochre and burnt sienna down here. It's probably too warm, but that's okay. I'd rather have it be a little bit too strong in pigment than to be too weak. All right. I think that looks nice. I'm going to grab my paper towel here and I'm just going to dab these windshields a little bit just to help maintain some of that light for later on. Yeah, I think that looks I think that looks good. Ooh, you know what? One thing I may do, I may take my, my palette knife here and draw some kind of perspective lines. 
And it's a little bit too wet right now. You can hardly see those. So not gonna worry about it. All right, let's let this dry and we're gonna get started on our second wash. All right, and just like that, we are back. This is now completely dry and we're gonna start on our second wash. So let me grab my brushes here. And the little dome on the top of that building in the distance is kind of a cooler color. So I'm gonna mix up something cool here. I'm grabbing some cobalt and some ultramarine, a little lavender there, a little burnt sienna just to neutralize it a little bit. Hopefully that warmed it up a little too much. Let's grab some more cobalt. Yeah. And as always, if you've watched my other videos, I want to go bold here. So let's start working through this tower. Okay, and I always want to vary my color. So I'm going to keep it cool, but I'm going to create a mix that's maybe got a little more ultramarine in it just to create some interest here. Work our way towards the top. All right, and there's this sort of, I don't know, little top to this tower. I'm going to grab a little yellow ochre in there just to mix things up. Now, something I've got to be careful of, and I actually don't like that. Let's go a little darker. Something I've got to be careful of is um, <clears throat> we've got this building over here on the side. Let me point to it. I've got this side building to worry about. If I go too dark with my background, I won't be able to get this dark enough to show that this is closer than that. So I've got to keep that in mind. Um, so again, I want to keep it uh, bold and dark, but I'm going to have to kind of watch a fine line here. All right, so let's keep working our way down. I'm going to leave some, some gaps here. All right, I'm gonna grab a larger brush. A larger brush should carry a bit more water and help me keep this maybe a touch lighter. And I also wanna neutralize this a little bit. It's a little bit too, I don't know. I, I like to have some colors showing through, but I don't know, it seems a little bit too harsh right now. So we're gonna tone some things down Add All right. Grab some ultramarine, a little burnt sienna. Let's keep working through here. I want to darken this cap a little bit. I'm going to grab some lavender. I'm just going to put that right on there. Now I'm going to kind of dab my brush instead of actually pulling tone with it. All right. A little burnt sienna. Start grabbing some of these grays and neutrals here. Again, just working through. I'm gonna grab some of that darker paint, draw some little chimneys and things along this top of this roof here. Let's give that a bit of a spray. And I'm gonna take and drop some water on here. And what that'll do is it should help pull some of that, that pigment down and lighten and neutralize our colors a little bit. Because I'm, I don't know, I'm not exactly liking the temperature of this building so far, but we're gonna keep working on it. 
And as long as it is wet, we can keep, keep working and fiddling with it. That's really all that matters. All right, let's warm it up a little bit as we get towards the bottom. Keep going here. Being careful to leave. I want to kind of cut out that building on the right because it's going to be darker. So I just want to make sure that I kind of visually know where I need to be darkening up. I'm going to leave some bits of light. These could be windows and things. All right, I'm going to take some pure water and pull it in from the side here. And what that's going to do is I want to have kind of a, a mistier effect on the side there. And I'm going to take my paper towel as well and kind of dab it out a little bit. Just in a few places. That will also help push this shape back. Okay, grab a little burnt sienna, a little cobalt, and I'm just going to keep working my way down here. And I've also got to be careful. Remember, we've got this little awning here on the right. All right. All right, that's not too shabby. Let's add a little bit of a darker roof line, though. I'm just going to keep, keep working with, with everything here. And again, since this is wet, I'm just going to use my brush to dot where I want marks to be. If I try to actually brush with it, sometimes it won't quite turn out. I'm going to add a couple of just lines through our building here, architectural lines and whatnot. Okay. That looks pretty good. I'm going to grab a little more lavender. A little more of that dark color and just dot the top of this. Just darken that just a little bit. And I'm kind of just playing with it right now. I want to have some variation and tone and color in here. And I definitely want it to be a bit darker down towards the bottom. All right. Now, let's see how we want to do this. I want to leave little bit of light there kind of cutting through our, our foreground but I don't want it to be so sharp along the bottom so I'm going to take that paper towel and I'm just going to soften a couple of areas something right like that <clears throat> I'm going to come in here grab a couple of just kind of pure paint just make a couple of harsh kind of marks, pull, pull some paint down, and we're going to kind of abstract those in later. But all that is is it could be people, other cars, street signs, different things out there. That's not the main subject of our building, so I'm not super concerned about it, but I do want to leave something there. And then I'm going to come in here, and I just picked up, this is some warm gray. I'm just going to dab through this while this is still really wet. Something right like that. I may come back and change that. I don't know. Let's put a line there. Yeah. Maybe a couple of lines here. I think that looks all right. Pick up a bit more water. That's one of the hardest things to get used to is you just you just gotta kinda keep keep playing with things. Alright, I think that looks pretty good so far. Let me grab my palette knife here and see if I can't scratch some windows. I think that looks good. 
maybe scratch some awnings over there, some, some vertical lines. And this is probably a little too wet right now, but I'll definitely come back and work on it. Okay, let's give that a little bit of a spray just to keep everything alive. You know what I may do real quick? I'm gonna just fade that area a little bit. Okay, yeah, that looks good. All right, let's work on this building. We're gonna have to get very dark, and very bold. I've got my flat brush, a little bit of water. I'm gonna grab some neutral tint, some burnt sienna, some cobalt blue. I'm gonna to try to build up just a really thick gray here. That's kind of a warmer color, and I'm gonna make a mark. You know what, I think that looks not half bad. Okay. I wanna be careful again. I've got that gazebo there. And I'm gonna to try to leave some of that kind of speckling there from the brush stroke. I think it'll add a little bit of interest to the shape. And I still gotta get it pretty dark. It's gotta get darker than that. So I'm gonna grab my other brush. Okay, let's grab some of that neutral tint. A little bit of that cobalt blue and let's start kind of working our way in here. And these are I don't know, some little building lines, could be balconies and things coming off there. Not too concerned about it. Grab some of that gray. Yeah, I think that looks nice. Yep, and I'm gonna leave some white in there just to give the impression of, you know, windows, that sort of thing. Okay. Now, let me give this a spray. I'm looking at it. I'm wondering if that building back there, the other building we've been working on is just a little bit too light. I'm gonna try to mix something up here. I'm gonna just dabble through there. And again, this is why we do this when this is still wet. If this had dried and I hadn't been spraying my paper, I would not be able to come back in here and mess with this. And the only reason I'm lightening it up is because I really liked the way that it looked now and I know it's gonna dry lighter. Grab a little bit of that lavender for the top. That had dried up pretty good, unfortunately. That's okay. We'll do something like that. All right. Now, let's get down into our subject here. Now, this is where things are going to get very, very interesting. I'm going to dab. I did like this kind of hazy effect, though, on the bottom. Just could be kind of you know, gas and things rising up from the city floor, exhaust, that sort of thing. All right. Now I've got two figures here that I want to paint over the top of this, this dark color here. I thought about cutting them out and I don't want to. I want to, I want to paint it pretty dark under here. All right, so I'm going to have to come back and paint those folks underneath there. Okay, and I'm gonna leave some gaps of light, as always. Okay, let's take this, kind of pull some light into there, and let's, let's get this shadow laid first before we dig into those cars, because I wanna have the cars bleed into the shadow so I gotta have that laid down first and we're gonna cool this thing off pretty good all right let's have our shadow 
come from over here, kind of right under these cars, and let's just have it go right across, something like that. All right, I'm gonna cut around the bottoms here of the cars. Okay. And I definitely need to give this a spray. And I'll work that transition a little bit better there. That water's pulled down now, so I'm just redabbing it a little. Okay. All right. That looks nice. Okay. Got to keep this wet down here, and I got to move a little bit quick to get that darkness that I'm looking for here. It's got to be wetter than that. Yep. Just going to keep working here. Oh, wow, grabbed a lot there. That is okay, because I need this to be dark. All right. <clears throat> now, I'm going to have to let this dry just a touch, but we're not done with that, that shadow there. We've got a lot to do. I'm going to warm it up towards this top edge here. Just so I can get bit more of a differentiation there because the ground is warm up where we start the shadow and then I want it to cool off down here okay let's grab some of that lavender <clears throat> let's grab a good bit of it there all right let's start building our cars we're going to keep the one on the right here. We're going to make it into a uh, little yellow taxi. I'm going to cut around these tail lights. I'm just picking up pure pigment. You know what? We're just not going to worry about those tail lights right now. Again, this has just got to get very, very dark. We're going to have it melt right down into the bottom of that shadow. Okay. I'm going to take some of that Chinese white I have up here. Get a little bit of color to it. We're going to start mixing that as well. Yep. <clears throat> Let's grab this. And let's just pull that paint along the bottom there. Okay, let's give it a spray and let's keep working at it. This shadow is going to take some time to build up. And that is okay. It's going to be similar to the way I would treat a reflection. And that there's going to be layers and layers, and we're just going to have to keep working it up. Yep. Okay. Let's add that little grill line on the car. Do the same thing over there. Oops. And I'm gonna do the same thing I did with this, this taxi here. I'm gonna grab some of that, that white paint. 
And I just want to give these windshields, normally I like to cut the windshields out and leave them as, as a negative kind of thing. But <clears throat> since these vehicles are in shadow, I can't have the the uh, windshields being so bright, it, it wouldn't really make sense. Okay, keep working here. Just keep working at it. Add that one bleeding down as well. All right, let's grab some more of that just pure paint here and just put it right on that windshield. I'll bring it down there all the way right to the do the same thing here okay let's keep working at these cars I don't like how that has spread, our, our grill lines spread a little bit too much on there. I'm going to pull that down. We're just going to keep, keep working at it here. Now this car up here might be just okay to leave that um, to leave that window as is. All right, let's go darker here. Let's keep working on this. Let's keep working. You know, I'm going to grab some red and throw that through there. We're just going to keep on working it. Yep, right like that. I'll grab some yellow ochre and we're going to thicken up this top line here. Just grabbing some pure yellow ochre there. And you can see how bold you've got to get when you're when you're in the shadows like this. Clean my brush off. Just grab some of that pure white paint there. And grab some pure lavender here. And just keep working at it. Part of watercolor is just having the confidence and belief that your painting is going to turn out okay. Those little lines there. You know what? I may have to. I may have to darken that windshield over on the left over there. Let's see. It's not really reading very well. Do something like that. Then grab some of that white and pull it through there. Yep. Something like that. And while this is wet too over here, guys, I'm just I'm looking to see if I need to add things, continue blotting stuff out over here in the distance. And we're just gonna keep slowly building into our painting. You gotta have patience. You got to have some patience. All right, this one here is looking pretty nice. I'm liking the way this is looking. Just darkening that line a little bit. Just darkening that as well. This one here could use a little work and I think the bottom of it is 
pushed too dark there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it down like that. And do the same thing here and just pull those down. Yep. Right like that. That looks much better. Let's put a little bit more of that. That purple over there. Okay. All right. Well, that's working because I'm. This is starting to take shape here. Where is my palette knife? I want to put in some some lines here, just some kind of, again, more architectural lines. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's starting to come along here. Let's give this a spray. Keep everything alive. All right. You know what I want to do? So it can be a cool effect sometime. I'm going to take some of that white down there. Yeah. Just pulling those cars down through the shadows, right like that. Just trying to make sure I get the size and everything of them correct. All right, and there will be that bit of darkness underneath them, so I've got to bring that back. Yep. Okay. Okay, that's looking pretty good so far. I'm going to add a highlight, though, in this car here. And I'll come back and add that, that hood line there. All right, that is coming together very nicely. Let's work on some figures. Man, we've been working on these cars long enough. All right. Pull out my... This is kind of my broken ratty brush I like to use for figures. Grab some of that lavender. Let's have a lavender guy over here next to this lavender car. And I'm going to put just two kind of little blobs there, and then I'm going to kind of slowly build that character up. You're not going to see me go in and start painting hands and things. Again, I want this to be... I want to have this person walking kind of, kind of towards these cars over here. I'm going to grab a little bit of that white paint. Maybe build a kind of a jacket type thing here. A little burnt sienna for the face. A little neutral tint for some hair there. All right, we're going to do the same thing. Let's take a little bit of that dark paint there. I may add that after, after this dries. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's do, let's do this figure over here. And just grab a little dirty water. Okay. Oops, a little bit of that white there. A little neutral gray. Kind of have them hidden behind that car there. A little burnt sienna. You'll notice a pattern here. I build my characters always pretty similar. It's a very similar process. <clears throat> oh, 
Okay, what next, what next? I've got two figures I'm gonna build over here, but I need this to dry up a little bit first. Something I may do, and I gotta be careful. I do not wanna overdo this car area. But I'm gonna pull down here just a little bit more of that kind of yellow. I'm just slowly building them up. It's it's a process. Okay. Yep. I think that looks nice. Oh, I do need to add. I forgot. We're going to come back and add that little kind of grill line on that car. All right. What else? What about things in the background here? This is probably fairly dry. Let's add some figures out there. We'll do one there and one there. And watch this. We're just going to, it does not take much to create some figures out of thin air. In fact, a lot of times my improvised characters, I think, look a lot better than my, my actual ones. When you improvise them, they end up having so much more, so much more life to them, right? Ooh, you know what I need to add out there? Some shadows. Now I've got this big shadow over here. I can't forget that there would be a few shadows out there. people and things. Okay. Take and blot that back up with the paper towel there. All right. All right. All right. Just looking here. Grab some of this white paint. Throw that there. Okay. All right. I'm going to let this dry and we're going to build up Oh, you know what? One more thing. These are those lines that I wanted to have scraped earlier. All right. We're going to let this dry. We're going to build up these two characters in the dark, add a few more little details, and then I think we're going to be done. All right. That's nice and dry. So let's finish our painting up. I'm going to grab some more of that lavender there. Oops. And we've got these characters to build over in the shadows. Yum. We'll grab just some of that pure white there. That always adds a really nice pop, especially against a, a dark background like this. I'm going to put a little, like, I'm going to try to put a, a vest here. Okay. Let me darken those up a little bit. Add a little hair on there. Just two, two folks kind of coming out of the, I don't know, maybe it's a pub or something over there. All right. I want to add a little bit of a reflection here. So I'm going to make two dots. I'm going to take my finger and just pull it down like that. I want it to be a little bit darker than that, though. Okay, something like that looks fine. I wanted to do the same thing for this gentleman over here. Ah, let's darken that up a little bit. Okay. That looks nice. Um, what else do I want to do? What else do we want to do? Maybe add a... 
kind of a, I don't know, some type of a lamp post over here or something. Let's see, let's grab a little bit of that white. Something over there. Let's create one out here in the distance. Everybody needs a lamp post. You gotta be able to see. I'm just putting a few smudges out there. More people and things, who knows? All right, let's add our highlights in there. Always the most fun part. Always, always, always. And we're gonna do something fun for these cars' taillights. I've got some white titanium gouache here. These two folks, they may still be too wet, but I will make it work. You really need that titanium gouache if you've got dark figures against a dark background. Really, really helps bring them out. All right, and then I'm going to take and put some dots, some vertical lines and things, just to help break up that background there. I'm creating the illusion of things. If you notice, I've only got, what, five people here? i got three here and, and kind of two here. This one's half finished. Really, four finished characters. Everything else in the back, I'm just suggesting. If you try to paint every little head and hair cut that, that's in your scene, it's, it's not going to look right. The mind can only focus on a few things at once. You don't want to give it too much to look at. Okay, now last thing we're going to do is we're going to do something fun for these taillights. You can see I've done it in the past here. This is where I like to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of that gouache. Oops. Just throw it on my, my board here. And I'm going to take some watercolor and mix them together. And what it'll do is it'll just make a tint I'm going to grab some of this, this Mayan orange here. Now, I know it looks red, but I promise it's supposedly an orange. And I'm going to mix it up, and what I'm going to end up with is this kind of pinkish white. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is we're going to, I'll make a line, I'll make two kind of spots here. I'll do that same thing where I just pull my finger down like that just to give a little bit of an impression of some tail lights there. Do the same thing there. Do that over there. Let's come in here and get some pure orange. Just put that on there. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'll take my finger and just smear and soften it. I don't want it to be you know, too defined, but just a little bit of something there. Okay, where's that gouache? I may just add on this taxi cab here, maybe a, uh, it's got the little taxi thing on top and then a little license plate down there. All right, I wish I could make these, I'd really like to make these taillights a little bit bolder. They're kind of soft on there and I wonder if I can just use, I'm gonna go in here for some of this red. Let's just see if we can't, does that look better or worse? I don't know. Yeah, we'll leave it as is. I don't want to keep messing with it too much, but it's hard not to. It didn't quite give me the impression I wanted. All right, that's okay. All right, I think, I think we are all finished here. 
I'm going to peel this off. Oh, we got to sign it. Always the most fun part. Okay, grab this. A little bit of that red there. All right, there we go. Let's take this off. Let's see what we've got. And we'll take a look and decide what did we do well and what could we have done a little bit better on. All right, so right off the bat, these taillights are not as strong as I hoped they would be. I wanted this reflection here to be a lot lighter and, and kind of powerful. So that is a little bit of a, a little bit of a mess up there. Um, I think also I could have, when we were working on this shadow, kind of drug the paint of the cars down a little bit more to get that kind of blurry reflection feel in here, but that's okay. Uh, what do we do well? I like our building in the background. I think we did a good job of keeping everything subtle. I didn't go crazy drawing a bunch of windows because I wanted to push that building back. I think our figures look nice, especially these guys over here. I think they look great. Um, yeah, other than that, not too much to say about it. Um, if you stuck with me all the way to the end, I really appreciate it. And I hope you learned something. If you like this demo, it'll be for sale in my store later this week. But remember to keep on painting. Thanks.